our final speaker and the most beautiful on the panel is Dr. Estrella Babano. I have met her personally in the Philippines and she does a great work and, and really loves children and loves people. So it's an honor to have her on this panel today. She's the former regional director of the Department of Education in the Philippines, a regional administrator and a professional leader. She was a superb architect and advancer of the Mindanao Peace Initiative based on her vision of empowering all people through public education and training that would be most successful under peaceful conditions and also incorporating an intergroup trust and cooperation. She's a former regional director of the Department of Education for Northern and Central Mindanao, and also the former education attache of the Philippine Embassy in Riyadh for Philippine schools overseas in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Middle East. Now she serves as the chairwoman of the Mindanao Peace Initiative. Let's give our, uh, this beautiful young lady a good a warm hand of applause as she comes. Thank you very much, Dr. Murray. Um, well, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Greetings of peace to one and all. And a pleasant afternoon. Um, the paper I'm going to present to you is a snapshot because of the time constraint of what we are doing in Mindanao, hopefully, to address the, the conflict we are facing right now. Okay, so it's addressing the roots of conflict, the Mindanao experience. Next. It's an introduction. Oh. The Mindanao that we know today is a land of mixed faith, cultures and beliefs. Cultural diversity defines and influences the relationships among the tribe peoples. It's one reality that we Mindanaoans face, along with some advantages and disadvantages that come with it. Cultural differences tend to make it more complicated and difficult for three groups of people to know and relate with each other. The three groups actually are the Muslims, the Christian migrants, and the indigenous peoples. To know and relate with each other or live together in a community. You have a situation that tends to lend itself to misunderstanding, mistrust, and mutual suspicion, chauvinism, and animosity. But the tribe people share the same fundamental belief in justice, democracy, and self-determination. And therefore, peace initiatives aims to foster the values and attitudes conducive to living harmoniously and peacefully amid cultural diversity. It seeks to achieve state of oneness among the tribe peoples. Thus, it works to promote tolerance, goodwill, and respect. Okay, our initiative is um, anchored on the four guideposts of peace. We have harmony with God. We know that the reason why we have conflict starts with self, you know. Um, if you don't have harmony with God, which means you keep on violating the commandments of God, then you don't have peace of mind. Likewise, in self, if your conscience tells you so and you do the other thing, I, I believe you don't have peace of mind. And then harmony with others, and then also with the environment. We know that we're just borrowing this earth from the future generation. Therefore, it is our responsibility to take care of it. Otherwise, the future generation will curse us even in our graveyard. Okay, as an educator, I focus on education. I believe that the heart of education is the education of the heart. That education to be effective should be transformational education. We know very well that what is happening on earth now is because of um, people who has been so engrossed on material competencies, performance, earning a degree, and has left behind their head the ultimate goal why we are here on earth, that the ultimate goal of life is in preparation for our 
union with our creator in the hereafter, that everything on earth is temporary. So the heart of education is the education. Formation of values is the foremost concern of education. That peace is a process. It is dynamic and holistic. We cannot just put it in paper and forget about it. I have known of a lot of peace pact, peace agreement that has been signed. Historical signing has been happening. But if people do not change their mindset, then nothing will happen on that paper which has been agreed. So we cannot, it, is, it must be nurtured and told to the pupils and teachers as well. We have to take care of, if we want peace, we make peace, we build peace, we keep peace. Education is the permanent solution to our situation. I believe that there's not much we can do with the adults now. Their minds are fixed. So let's start with the kids. Developing them at a very early age. The impact may not be But we can be very sure that we're coming up with a new generation of people that would not want, ha want to have war or want to have violence. What are our peace education initiatives? We have established School of Peace. In the School of Peace, we have integration of, of peace concepts. In instructional materials, we have developed, we have changed our instructional materials. Then we also undergo training with school heads. We create or organize peace education council involving the parents, the community, the church, the media, and everybody who has a stake in the development of a child is a member of the Peace Education Council because we believe that to develop the child fully, spiritually, physically, mentally, the school cannot do that task. It needs a village to educate a child. So we need everyone's effort, concerted effort, Okay, we have also to structure our schools if we want them to be a school of peace. We establish learning hubs. In the Philippines, we have big um, enrollments. We have about 55, 65, 70, and therefore not all the children can be attended to. So we provide learning hubs for every subject area where the child who wants to have an enhancement lesson should go. And once the teacher will see there's English, math, um, character education, technology. They just go there and then the teacher will go and provide them enhancement teaching. We have peace parks in the school. The peace park is considered a zone of peace. Pupils and children who are fighting, they would run to the peace park. Once you are inside the peace park, you cannot be fought by anybody. You're safe. So also a child who has done something wrong will just go to the peace park. Instead of going straight to the classroom, afraid of being scolded by the teacher, she will go to the peace park, sit there, and then um, wait for the teacher or the principal to talk to her and then guide and then bring her to the classroom. Then we have peace gardens. So this is a school community in Davor, please. OK, we also have strengthening alive and madrasa education. Um, in the Philippines, the, the Muslims are minorities. Our education is basically anchored on Christian dogma. And therefore, to make this education responsive and relevant, we have to integrate Arabic language and Islamic values education to make the education responsive and, and relevant to our Muslim children. We have a support of activities. This is anchored on the principle of learning to learn, learning to do, learning to be, learning to live together. Uh, an education cannot be effective if it's only inside the classroom. There has to be a support activity outside of the classroom to put what they have learned into practice. Okay, we have this um, kids say no to guns, converting arms to farms from instruments of death to nurturing of life. We are campaigning with our parents not to buy toy guns to their children, boy kids. I know that parents, fathers especially, once they have a son, the first toy that they buy is a toy gun. And we say, no, no. We let them surrender the toy guns in exchange of seedlings and let them plant the seedlings. So from instruments of death to nurturing of life, 
converting arms to farms. We also attend to the education of our indigenous peoples. Our indigenous peoples are the indigenous inhabitants of the, the land and uh, <coughs> they strongly believe that our education is letting them forget what is their heritage as a people. So therefore, we have to enrich our, our please. <laughs> OK, these are support activities. We also have community immersion. We allow children to homestay in Christian children to homestay in Muslim family and vice versa. We conduct Peace Congress and Symposium. We have tuning programs, tuning programs with institutions in Manila, like a Catholic institution, Miriam College, has a tuning program with some of our schools, and we exchange students. Then we have cultural exchange. This is the only way to erase the, the biases and prejudices that they have. And also, um, seemingly, um, break the invisible barrier that lies in the minds of people about biases. We have the Peace Festival. <coughs> okay, next. We have Interfaith Forum, yeah, where we invite an imam, a pastor, a priest to talk to our children and parents. Next. What are the implications, promotion of cultural peace, respect and tolerance in multicultural diversity, healthy coexistence regardless of cultural differences, religious beliefs and multiracial ethnicity, sustainable development and establish strong partnership between government and civil society. <coughs> Faith. Faith-based organization. Okay. Finally, it is only by investing in the creation of a new culture of peace in the present generation that lasting universal peace would be achieved. Thank you very much. Thank you and wassalamu alaikum. It's working one, two, excellent. Thank you very much. Did she fly through that or what? <laughs>